Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you a video today. It's going to be my review of uh, WWE Live for Madison Square Garden 2015. Um, the reason why I am doing this review is because I'm not going to be on the Massasoit Wrestling Corner tomorrow, which you can check out up here. If you don't know what the Massasoit Wrestling Corner is, it's hosted by me and my two friends, James the Heatman Hebert and Ori Dre. It's a lot of fun. It's a really fun YouTube channel. You can totally... No, no, you, it's a really fun playlist I do on this uh, channel. It's a fun series. And uh, I'm not going to be able to be on it tomorrow. Usually we do a show every Monday and we just talk about all the professional wrestling stuff there. Um, however, I'm not going to be able to be on the show because um, I'm going to Watermall. This was a, like a total last minute thing. I did not expect it to happen this way. Um, what happened was uh, my uncle... Last night, bought the tickets. Oh, there's a car horn beeping. But anyhow, well, alarm going off. Um, but yeah, my uncle bought the tickets last night and asked if I wanted to go, and obviously I was going to say yes. And, uh, you know, um, I was really uh, excited about that. Um, and uh, I'm going to Watermall. I can't wait to go to Watermall. It's going to be an exciting show because... Uh, well, you know, going to do a wrestling event live um, is always an exciting time. So I'm not going to be able to be on the uh, Massasoit Wrestling Corner tomorrow. I uh, did talk to James about it, and uh, as of right now, there is going to be an episode tomorrow. I just won't be on it. So you can still watch the episode, but I just won't be on it. So now that I've gotten down to that, let me do my review of the show. So we had... JBL, Rich Brennan, and Byron Saxon on commentary for this show. We had the opening match. It was a tag team match. It was Sheamus and Rusev with Summer Rae Winside versus Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton. Originally, these were advertised to be singles matches with Sheamus facing off against Orton and Rusev against Ziggler. Uh, I think it's better that they just threw them into a tag team match because nobody wants to see those matches again. And a combination, it's still not great, but it, it's a little, at least a little bit manageable, a little bit better. Um... This was a solid opening tag team match here. The heels get the heat. No, actually, Rusev is punching Randy Orton in the corner. And Randy Orton just thumbs Rusev right in the eye, which was like a heel-like move to do. And after this, Rusev is like selling it. I don't know if he actually thumbed him in the eye, but... But then uh, the heels get the heat on Dolph Ziggler for a while. And then Randy Orton gets the hot tag on Sheamus. And he starts going off on him. And then uh, Rusev tries to attack him. Randy Orton throws him over the top rope. And Dolph Ziggler super kicks Rusev. And then Sheamus takes out both Orton and uh, Ziggler. He goes for the bro kick on Orton. Orton moves out of the way. Ziggler hits a super kick. And Orton hits an RKO for the win. So a good solid opening tag team match there. And afterwards, Rusev gets in the win. And talks about how uh, Sheamus cost him this match. He could have just beat him by himself. And he says he's just as useless as Lano is. Which is somewhat true. Um, because Lana is kind of useless now. And then, uh, he goes to make some insults about Lana. And then Sheamus lays him out with a bro kick and t tells him he can kiss his house. Um, there's some commotion going on outside. I don't know if you can hear that. But anyway, yeah, that's what happens. Um, and then, um, yeah, it was good. It was decent stuff. I enjoyed it. And then, uh, Corporate Kane gets interviewed backstage. And, um... Corporate Kane says that uh, he's here because he's excited to see Seth Rollins face have a match against uh, uh, John Cena for the U.S. title. And he just really wants to be at this show because it's Madison Square Garden. It's in a legendary arena. Um, and then, um, what else does he say? Uh, he also says that there is a demon lurking for Seth Rollins. Kane was great again. I really enjoyed Kane. I'm loving this new Kane role. It's making him really relevant. And then we get uh, Stardust versus Neville when they're never ending feud. Um, I'm still like somewhat interested in this feud. It just it's all the same stuff really. They're not it's not as exciting as it was uh, a few months ago. Um, because uh, now it's just dragging on and on and on. I hope this is the last match here. Uh, the match was pretty good. Uh, Neville hits all his high flying moves on Stardust in the beginning, and then Stardust hits a disaster kick while Neville's on the apron. He dominates the match for a little while, 
and then uh, Stardust goes to uh, do like a figure four or something to Neville around the wind post, but Neville throws him face first into the wind post, and then he hits a um a somersault dive, um or like a moonsault on the outside, and then uh, Neville just takes control. And then uh, Stardust was really obsessed with Neville's cape in this match. Earlier in the match, he grabbed it. Neville tried to win with the wall up, but Stardust had kicked out of it. This time he grabs it. He puts it on. And then he goes to go off the top rope, but Neville counters with a uh, right hand to the uh, midsection. And then Neville hits a uh, super kick and a, the red arrow for the win. So yeah, I like the match, but I didn't really care about the stuff what that Stardust was doing with the cape. I didn't think that... I, thought, I didn't really like that. But it makes sense for the story. I just didn't like it. Um... Next, Paul Heyman cut a promo, and uh, he talked about how the Big Show is a giant, and uh, this is just like how um, the how um, New York's basketball team is going to face the Boston Celtics, and, and the difference is that the whole match, Brock Lesnar isn't going to be on defense, he's going to be on offense, and he says that he's going to destroy Big Show. I thought it was an amazing Paul Heyman promo, as always. And when Renee Young was interviewing him... Um, Paul Heyman, even like, you're not doing it right. And then he introduces himself the way he normally does. I really liked it. Paul Heyman was great, as always. Um, then we get Team Bella versus Team PCB. I don't get this. Um, I think Team Bella cut a promo. I don't remember if they cut a promo before the match or not. Um, if they did, it wasn't good. Um, but I don't. it probably most likely wasn't good because the Bellas can't talk on the mic. Alicia Fox is good on the mic, but I just don't remember what they said. If it happened or not. But uh, Paige is with Charlotte and Becky Lynch again. I mean, I understand they want to do like a slow turn with this. And they want to build it up really slowly. But I think that this they can't do... Like, this is confusing me. Like, I understand you want to like slowly build up this feud. Because you want to probably save it for Survivor Series. as a big match at Survivor Series, I'm thinking. Um... But then, we, then the, but I'm, what I'm not getting about it is you don't really need to do like a slow build up because Paige cut that promo on Raw, uh, well a couple of weeks ago now, so that's you don't you know she pretty much has already turned. There's no real reason to like tease a turn. I don't like that. Um, th so I couldn't really get into the match. It didn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, they get the heat on Becky. Well, what happens in the match is uh. Paige just tags herself in, and then uh, Becky Lynch do gets dominated, and um, Charlotte even says that she got this, and then uh, Becky Lynch gets the hot tag on Charlotte, and she hits, she, like I said, they've really done down Charlotte's wrestling ability now, she only does the minimal moves now, she does that stand-up neck break with a spear, and then she goes for the, fig um, the figure eight, but uh, Paige tags herself in the match, which was which, which they didn't, weren't happy about, because... Every, they had everything going their way, and then Paige just tagged themselves in. Like, they were going to win the match if Paige didn't do that. So then the team Bella gets the heat on Paige for a while, and Paige goes to make a tag to Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Um, they just get off the apron and watch Paige lose, and then uh, Nikki Bella gets Paige in the back attack, and she hits it. But she could have... Paige was, like, t totally could have fought out of this, because, like I said, it's not like Nikki Bella uh, did a move. To do the to do this, she just get up, picked her up and did it. Like I think she should just do a move, like a knock her out because it doesn't really make a lot of sense that all of a sudden um, Nikki Bella can just pick her up out of nowhere and you couldn't even tell Paige could have fought out of it because she was like wiggling her legs and stuff stuff like she could have. So I really like that. But uh, Nick Team Bella wins. Um, and then afterwards, Paige pretty much bitches about the fact how her teammates turned on her. I hated all this. It was all bad. Made Paige look like a, a bitch. A whiny one, too. Um, and then next, they do a video package for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month now. The metal rope is pink now. Because um, I guess the Connor thing's over, which uh, they completely forgot to make the metal rope yellow, So I wouldn't and they didn't even like have it on the entrance ramp anymore, so I wouldn't be surprised... If, um, they did the same thing. But, uh, it's the same one, pretty much, except they just have different superstars in it. Because, obviously, the superstars are, were there before. Uh, some of them aren't, weren't there before, or some of them aren't even there anymore. Um, 
And then we have uh, Kevin Owens defending his Intercontinental Championship against Chris Jericho. Uh, Chris Jericho cuts a promo and talks about how he's been, um, how this is his 25th anniversary of being a uh, wrestler. He says he started in 1990 somewhere in Canada and he wrestled uh, Lance Storm who was in the audience and he points out some other people. I didn't. I, I was kind of eating food so I couldn't really hear what he was saying and I was moving around a lot. So, But Jericho says it would be a great way to go out, win or lose. Um, but it would be nice to win his 10th Intercontinental Championship. And this was a great match. This was almost match of the night. Um... Chris Jericho dominates the match for a while. He hits the springboard drop kick. And then eventually Kevin Owens kicks him coming in the win. He destroys him for a while. And then Jericho starts to uh, do his comeback. And then he goes for the walls of Jericho. Kevin Owens fights out of it. And uh, Kevin Owens, uh, he doesn't hit the pump, the pump handle like, what's it, what is he called? The pancake power driver, but he hits like a pancake throw on him. And then... Um, but Jericho kicks out of it, and then Jericho gets him in the walls. Kevin Owens fights out of that, and then he hits an Insiguri, and Jericho goes for the lion saw. Ke uh, Kevin Owens got the knees up, and then he hit the, uh, what did he hit? And then he hit a uh, something. I forget. Um, but then he hit, he, he, he hit the move that I, I don't remember. And then Kevin Owens went for the swanton. Kept, Jericho got the knees up, and then at one point Jericho got Kevin Owens to the walls, but J Owens fought out of it. And then uh, Kevin Owens hit a super kick on uh, Chris Jericho. Um, Jericho kicked out of it, and then Jericho hit the code breaker. He goes for the cover, but uh, Kevin Owens gets his foot, up, gets his hand on the rope, so the referee has to break the count. And then um, Chris Jericho goes for the walls again. Kevin Owens thumbs him in the eye. Uh, well, no way. Well, then Owens hit the super kick, and then uh, Kevin Owens went to, for the pump handle, for the pop, pop up power bomb, but. Um, Jericho hits a hurricane and then he goes to uh, put him in the walls of Jericho. But Kevin Owens hits a thumb to the eye and rolls him up for the victory. And Kevin Owens walks out, still your Intercontinental Champion. Um, I thought this was a, a great match. And Kevin Owens looked really strong out there. And I, I dug the finish. So I thought this was good stuff. What doesn't make any sense about it, though, is Jericho's all of a sudden a face. I know Jericho's a part-timer. but it's And it's fine for him to come back and switch roles. But he was not... He was around two weeks ago and he was a heel at 90 Champions and now he's all of a sudden a face. That didn't really make a lot of sense, but other than that, this was a good match. Um, and then Big Show's backstage. I thought they were going to do something, but it just shows him like getting ready for his match against Brock Lesnar. And then uh, we get Kofi Kingston and Big E with Xavier Woods win side and they were defending the tag team titles, the WWE tag team titles against the Dudley Boys. Um... And the New Day cut a promo talking about how uh, the Dudleys, um, this is going to be like, and they cut a, and they, and they showed an amazing video package for this match too. I really enjoy, I dug that. Um, but the New Day talk about how uh, the Dudley boys have had hold, how nine time tag team champions, and they're not going to hold them this time. And then they cut like a tribute promo, but like trash in the Dudleys talking about how they wrestle with glasses without lenses. Um, Talking about how like they use like an old reference to an old '90s TV, so when they go "What's up," uh, I thought that was great. And then uh, they even talk about how they're gonna save the tables. I thought this was great promo. The new day is really becoming entertaining. I've grown to like them, so I liked. It. So I thought this was great. And the match was pretty much the same stuff you saw at Night of Champions. That's really what it was. It was the same finish too. The Dudleys hit the 3D. I think they even hit it on Kofi again. And then Xavier Woods gets in there, interferes. They stomp him down. They get a table. And, uh, they 3D, no, they power bomb or 3D Xavier Woods. They put Xavier Woods through the table. It was the same stuff. I didn't really care for the finish. I think this was where the Dudley boys, their hometown. And I think they should have won the tag team titles here. And I think you needed to do a title change on this show. And this was the match where you should have done the title change. And I also think that this was the Dudley boys hometown. So this was where to do it. And it was just all the same, really. So that's just my that's just me right there. Um, next, it was Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman inside versus Big Show. Uh, Brock, Les uh, Brock Lesnar tries to do a double takedown to Big Show, but he throws him outside the ring. And we've seen him do that before, but it's still impressive. And then um, Big Show just dominates the match. He hits three choke slams, and Lesnar no-souls both of them. But then it, 
Big Sh- he sells the second one. He sells the third one, and then uh, Lesnar kicks out of it. Then Big Show goes for the WMD, and then Lesnar takes Big Show to ju- to Suplex City, and he hits four supl- German suplexes and an F five for the win. I thought this was great because I love seeing Big Show get destroyed, and I like seeing Brock Lesnar destroy people. So I thought this was great. And then Lesnar leaves. And then when Big Show gets to his feet, Lesnar comes back out. And he hits a belly-to-belly um, suplex and then another F5 and leaves. I hope Big Show retires after this, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Because he was still able to walk out. I thought when he got up and was gonna and was walking out that Brock Lesnar was going to come out again. But yeah, I hope Big Show at least disappears off TV for a while. And then maybe he says, oh, I'm going to retire now. I hope that happens. Um... Okay, so next uh, we have the main event. It's John Cena defending his U.S. title against Seth Rollins in a steel cage match. Uh, John Stewart was out there with his son, and John Cena gave him like a look. I was uh, worried that John Stewart was going to interfere in this match, but thank God that didn't happen. Um, and Seth Rollins dominates the match for a while. He throws Cena into the cage a bunch of times, and then uh, Cena hits a bulldog off the turnbuckle, and. Uh, Rollins tries to escape through the door, but Cena stops him, and they uh, have like a standing match. Rollins hits a slim blade on Cena. Uh, Cena hits an electric chair face first, and then uh, Rollins continues to dominate Cena, and he keeps trying to get get out of the cage, but then Cena hits his comeback on Rollins, um, and he goes for the five-knuckle shuffle, but of course Rollins fights, uh, kicks him in the shoulder, and then uh, hits a tooth, and then he hits a super kick in the midsection, super kick in the face. And then um, Rollins goes for the five-knuckle shuffle, but Cena fights out of that, and then Cena does the five-knuckle shuffle. And then uh, Rollins and Cena both keep trying to escape through the door because Cena had Rollins in the STF, and uh, they both kept trying to escape. Rollins hit a high knee off the top of the cage. I thought that was cool. Uh, And then uh, they keep trying to escape out of the cage. Um, Cena goes to jump off the cage, and then uh, Rollins catches him into a powerbomb. That was sick. And then uh, Rollins um, goes for a high knee, but Cena catches him to the STF. Um, what else happened in this match? Is there anything else noteworthy that happened, or can I just get to the finish? Because this was a great match. This was a match of the night for me. Um, I guess that's about it. There was, it. This was a great match. I thought this match was better than the other cage match they had. And then eventually... Um, Seth Rollins goes to climb out of the cage, and then Kane comes out. No, his pyro didn't go. No pyro on this show. I think the reason there was no pyro was because the fans were really close to the stage, so they couldn't do the pyro any pyro. Um, and Kane comes. Demon Kane comes out. It's not cool, but it's Demon. Demon Kane comes out, and he stands on the cage when Rollins is gonna get out. So Rollins decides to try and do a frog splash off the cage, but Cena moves out of the way and hits. And then Cena hits an AA for the win, and uh, he retains the championship. And then afterwards. Uh, Speaking of which, before I get to that, I heard John Cena's taking time off after Hell in a Cell. He's going to take like two months off. Um, I think he's. I hear him and Nikki Bella are going to get married, so that might be why. And obviously, you know, I'm fine with that because, you know, he, he one, he needs time off. He's always there. He's always shown up. I think he needs time off. I think uh, he needs time off. The company also needs time off because uh, with John Cena there, it's hard for superstars to really get over. Um, to because uh, they always push John Cena. So when I I notice when Cena's injured, then they try to create some stars. And John Cena's pretty much beaten everybody there is to beat in the WWE now. There's really no one for him to work with now, as of right now. So maybe taking a couple of months off would help him. Um, and then he comes back, obviously, maybe at the Royal Rumble, and he's in the match. He won't be like win the match or anything, but he's in the match. So I hope that happens. Um, but yeah, Cena wins the match. Then afterwards, Kane um closes the door. And uh, destroys Seth Rollins. He hits a choke slam and a tombstone on him, and th- then that was it. Uh, good stuff. I like the ending of the show. And all the all the show really wasn't bad. I think people are hated on the show, but I actually like this show. I thought it flowed really well. Um, and uh, for the most part, they had we had some good matches throughout the show. And uh, you know, there's some matches I didn't like on this show. I didn't like um like I didn't like the Divas match, and I really wasn't a huge fan of Stardust versus Neville because of that cape stuff. But overall, the show really wasn't bad. I thought this was a decent show here. Um, everybody's hate. This is supposed to be one of those live WWE shows. It's just on the network. 
Uh, but I like I liked I I came off with pretty pleased with the show. I didn't think it was a bad show. It wasn't as good as the Beast in the East show. That was a bad show. But I think this was actually a pretty good show. I like the cage match. I like Lesnar going out there and just destroying Big Show. I I I I didn't really like the tag team title match, but I like the IC title match and I like the opening tag team match. But overall. Uh, I thought this was a pretty good show here. I, th I thought it flowed really well, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So if you want to check out some uh, other stuff on this channel, like I said in the beginning, Master Soy Wrestling Corner is up here. Um, make sure to tune in tomorrow if there's an episode. I'm not exactly sure if there's going to be one yet, but as of right now, plan on it. Um, and then uh, down below is going to be uh, my uh, Own the Talkinator channel. If you want to subscribe to that, it's where I post all my non-wrestling uh, YouTube channels. I uploaded a video on there yesterday, so check that out. Then CM Brothers is over here, where I post both wrestling and non-wrestling videos. Then over here is my my friend James Hebert has two YouTube channels. One is over here. It's called James Hebert, where he makes custom Titan drawings of professional wrestlers, and he does vocal voiceovers for music and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. And then somewhere on this video, you can check out his Wayne with Youth Wrestling channel. Uh, he uses WWE 2K14 to create his own little wrestling company there. That's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, he's holding a 32-man tournament to crown the first ever WIW champion. And I'm one of those people in that tournament. And I'm going to win the tournament and become the first ever WIW champion. Um, and then, um, what else? Oh, and my friend John Tutt has a YouTube channel. It's called uh, John Tutty, I think. And uh, he's, he's going to upload a video on there in a few months. But make sure to subscribe so that way you'll see the video. Um... And another person that has a YouTube channel is uh, Steve Coakley. I think is how you say his name. He, he is also on the Master Soy Wrestling Corner. You can check out his YouTube channel. And you can check out Chris Dodd's YouTube channel. They don't. Uh, Steve Coakley only has like two videos posted. But you can ch subscribe and check him out. And Chris Dodd doesn't have any YouTube channels. But still subscribe to him. You know, he's a cool guy. Um, but uh, you can also subscribe to my channel down below to, to check out any future content. Other than Master Soy Wrestling Corner, which is up there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.